If you want to upgrade the quality of your video content, podcast, or look more professional on a business call, the Opal C1 webcam could be your solution. This high-end webcam records in 4K, works well in many lighting conditions, and includes an app for lots of video customizations. Currently, there is a wait list just to buy the Opal C1 webcam, and it's $299. So we're going to review its features, and you can decide whether it's right for you. Plus, we're going to compare its video quality to the iPhone camera for 4K video, which you can use in Riverside. So here's the Opal C1 review. Just taking it out of the box, you can tell this is a high quality piece of hardware. It's sturdy, built well, uses USB-C to connect to your computer, and it comes with a great stand that will mount to most monitors. Plus, you can unscrew that stand and actually use the Opal C1 webcam on a tripod, which is really nice. And actually, one of my favorite little features is this lens cover that magnetically attaches to the Opal C1 webcam. It's easy to take on and off and has that nice little felt back to protect the lens. Now, like I said, the Opal C1 can record up to 4K video, which you do get a warning that not all applications support 4K video. It does work in Riverside, and we'll test that in a moment. It has an equivalent f1.8 aperture. Again, this is a webcam lens, so it's not like mirrorless f1.8 lens quality, but it does get pretty good. Again, it connects via USB-C. It does have a built-in microphone, which is pretty high quality, and it can record up to 60 frames per second. It does come with a nice USB-C cable that's coiled on one end so it doesn't lay all over your desk and stays pretty compact. Now, the Opal C1 webcam does require an application. It's still in beta, and it's only available on the Mac right now. It will be coming for Windows soon, but right now it's Mac only. The app does give you lots of customizations. You can leave all these settings in auto mode, and it'll get a pretty good picture quality, but I found, especially when it came to white balance and sometimes focus, I had to manually adjust it, and thankfully, once you manually adjust it, it will remember that setting even the next time you turn it on. I'll show you a video test in a moment comparing the auto settings and manual, but again, you can do focus, you can adjust the bokeh, which is the blurred background. It is a digital blur, it's not an actual lens blur that you would see with like a mirrorless camera, but it does do pretty well not making it look super blurry around the face and the edges. It looks a little more natural than a typical webcam. You can zoom and even do auto face lock and it will follow you kind of like the center stage feature on modern iPads. Then you can also adjust settings manually like brightness, exposure, vibrancy, and let's jump into what those look like when you adjust those settings. So this video is coming straight out of the Opal C1 camera and we're gonna play with some of the settings so you can see what they do. Of course, you can do focus lock where you can adjust the focus distance manually or you can turn that off and it will automatically try to focus on your face. You can adjust bokeh settings, whether or not you're blurring the background or keeping it clear. And you can turn on face lock. Again, this is like center stage on some Apple devices. So if I move around the frame, you'll see it follows me. And honestly, it does follow me pretty well. I think it even performs a little better than center stage. Or you can just keep it at a set zoom distance and it'll stay just like this. And again, you can adjust all the brightness and vibrancy manually. You can turn on a toggle and then adjust the brightness, adjust vibrancy. I have found it does pretty well on auto for most of these settings. When it comes to white balance, for some reason the lighting that I have here in the studio, it gets me a little pinkish, a little red, and so I actually did manual white balance, skewed it a little more blue, and honestly I'm still kind of playing around with the white balance. I don't love it right here, but it's auto is still a little too pink, so I'm sure in your lighting situation you can find the perfect balance, but I just haven't found it just yet. Now again, this can record in 4K, Depending on the application you're trying to use the Opal with, you can turn off the 4K and just go to 1080p resolution in case the application doesn't support it. It also has interesting features like if you throw a peace sign two fingers up, it will actually shut off the camera automatically. So if I give this symbol and hold it up for a moment, you'll see the video actually turns off automatically. I didn't have to click or touch anything. And if I do the same symbol again, it will enable the camera once more. Now, like I said, if you jump into a Riverside studio with the Opal C1, Riverside will recognize the Opal as a webcam. You can use it directly, and it recognizes the 4K resolution. So if you want 4K video from your Riverside recording, the Opal C1 will support it. And as you can see here, I've started a recording here in Riverside. I'm recording on the Opal C1, and in the studio settings, you see I'm getting 4K quality from this camera, and I'm pulling the audio. You can also use the microphone from the Opal C1, but I'm using an external microphone here. Now, one of the brand new features of the Riverside app on the iPhone, Android, or even iPad is I can join a studio and use my iPhone as a second camera. I hit the three dots next to the studio, tap join with second camera, and then this iPhone will be recorded as a second angle during my Riverside recording. And as you can see here in the Riverside studio, that iPhone is now showing up as a secondary multicam and is recording 4K. 
and you can use the back camera on the iPhone or the front one. You can switch between it in the Riverside app, but I'm gonna use the back camera because that's the highest quality lens that I can get from the iPhone. And so now here's the Opal C1 video recording. This is recorded directly in Riverside. And I'm also recording a secondary angle right here on my iPhone, also in 4K. And now you can compare the quality and see what it looks like to record the Opal C1 directly and the iPhone. You're actually gonna get a better recording, I think, from your iPhone, better white balance, better exposure, and you don't have to mess with any settings. You'll get a better quality video right out of the camera of the iPhone than you would with the Opal C1. So if you're looking for high quality 4K video from your remote video recordings, I think using the iPhone, especially with Riverside secondary camera option, is probably gonna get you the best quality video. The Opal C1 webcam, it does look very good. When it comes to webcams, it's probably the top model, but you got some weird things with white balance in low light situations, it will be more grainy than the iPhone. And you do have to tweak more settings than the iPhone. I think you're gonna get great video right out of the iPhone's back camera without any adjustments. And it'll just record as easily in Riverside as it would with a webcam. If you have more questions about the Opal C1 webcam, drop a comment below, we'd love to answer you there. And subscribe to the Riverside channel, hit that bell icon so you don't miss a video. We have lots of tutorials on podcasting, how to create high quality video content using video switchers, inside of Riverside, and a ton more. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.